Hi, this is Ralph, and in this uh, video, I want to go over how you can set an active link option in a navigation menu for a web page. Basically, we're going to have a menu with a various state or color change, let's say, on hover. And then when a person is active on a particular page, we want that one link to maintain its color so that we have a very obvious visual aid on what page is currently active. So I'm going to do a little bit of setup here first. Currently, I have a page1.html. It's based off of my blank XHTML one strip template. Um, I haven't really done anything to it. I've got, a, of course, a title in there. I'm referencing a CSS file, external, and I've got a headline one. I also have a CSS file, which is currently blank. Okay, So this is my page one. I'm going to do a little bit of work on page one, and then I'm going to make multiple copies of this. So I'm going to end up with a five-page website pretty soon here, just to really test this thing out. So let me jump down here into the body section below my headline one, and I'm going to start off by creating a navigation menu. I'll go ahead and uh, I'll use an unordered list, ID equals nav menu. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and create a series of hyperlinks to each of several pages, page 1.html, page 2.html, page 3.html, and so forth. There we go. So I've got an unordered list with a unique ID called nav menu. Then I have five list items. Notice each of my list items has their own ID that's unique. And each of those list items contains a hyperlink, and I just made some arbitrary navigation menu names like home blog store account and contact these can be anything you want of course each of these is a relative link to a page which really doesn't even exist yet so this is the page one and this is the menu that's actually going to appear on all of my pages now to really have a consistent menu appear on all pages in a website the one of the most efficient ways to do that is with uh, PHP includes so I'd encourage you to check out the video I have on PHP includes but for now I'm just going to do a little kind of copying and pasting so to speak. So this is my page one. I'm going to go ahead and uh, save what I have here, page one.html. I'm using Notepad++. Let me go ahead and do file, save a copy as, and I will call this page two.html. I'm going to do file, save a copy as, page three.html, and just repeat that a couple more times. There we go, I've made my five pages, now I just need to open them up, so let me go ahead and hit open, and there's my page five through page two that I've just created. Open those up, and there we go. In fact, I'm just going to go ahead and sort them here so they're kind of in order. There we go, so I've got my page one, page two, page three, page four, page five. Now I'm going to go through each of these and just make a couple subtle little changes here. I'm going to go to page two, and I'm just going to change the title and headline one, okay, just so they're up to date. There we go, so I've made changes to each of my five pages. Uh, page one, page one home, and let me jump over page three, page three store. So that way it'll be different, you know, it'll be more obvious that we're clicking on some different things. In fact, let's go ahead and test this out. I'm going to go ahead and do a uh, save all since I've got five pages that need to be updated. I'll do a save all. Let me jump over to my browser here and refresh, and this is how my website looks. I've got the navigation menu on there. There we go, so now when I click on one of these others, we should see the headline change. So there's my page two blog, there's my store, my account information, contact page. So I have a functioning navigation menu on each of these pages in this artificial website. All right, so let's go ahead and jump back over to our HTML. Things are looking good here. Now there's really one other critical change I want to make. And I want to uniquely identify each page within my website. I'm going to jump over to page one first. And I'm going to do this in the same way that I uniquely identified this unordered list and these list items. I'm going to put an ID attribute right inside of the body tag. And I'll just go ahead and call this page one. Okay, then I'll go to the body for page two. There we go. I'm going to repeat that for pages three, four, and five. Okay, there we go. So each of my web pages has a unique ID in the body tag. This way we'll be able to specify exactly how we want a particular link to look on a particular page that's open. So make a little bit more sense in a second here. But if somebody is on my store page, if they are on 
link 3 within page 5, then we can have that link look and behave a little bit differently than the other links. And that's really the ultimate goal here, is to give a visual indicator to the visitor on which page they are currently active on, besides the normal things about heading changes and con uh, content changes. So now that I've got the HTML side of this done, my next uh, series of steps are going to take place on my CSS file, which is still currently blank. Now one of the first CSS rules I like to do is put in a reset rule. So let me go ahead and do this. Okay, This will get rid of the default margin and padding of my elements, and just so we can kind of visualize what that's doing, if I jump over my page, any page really now, and refresh, there we go, so all margins and paddings are gone. Now my bullets aren't gone, they're just off the screen. But I do want to make a few little changes here now. So let me go ahead and jump back over to the uh, CSS. And I'm going to put a few more CSS rules in. Okay, this is how my page looks now. Now I didn't focus, I didn't go over step by step on the CSS I've written, because so far it's really just been aesthetic changes. But let me just do a quick review here. Of course I've got my reset rule at the top. For the body of my page, I'm setting the font family to a common sans serif font like Verdana. For background color, I'm using a shorthand uh, hex code. So using a three character hex code like I did, CFC represents CCFFCC. Um, for my headline, I did a text align center, I put a bottom border, and I did a little bottom padding so that way the border wouldn't touch the bottom of the lettering. And then I also have, let's bring this up a little bit more, I've got uh, my navigation menu. I'll be doing a few more things related to the navigation menu certainly, but so far just a few aesthetic changes. I give it a background color, I've given it some margin, and I've set the width. Go and save that. There we go. So this is my navigation menu, and you can see my bullets are there now. So I'm going to start cleaning some things up. My unordered list, I don't want it to actually look like a bulleted list, so I'm going to go ahead and do a list style type none. Now that little property and value for CSS, that will get rid of the bullets, okay? And I'm going to do a few other changes to this. I'm going to jump down and I'm going to create another rule for my uh, the list items within my nav menu. Okay, so this is a contextual selector. I'm formatting the list items within my nav menu. Now you notice I've also got the little UL uh, type right there in front of the pound sign nav menu. The UL is not essential. I could delete that and this would work just fine. But I'm putting it in there as a reminder to me and to you that ID nav menu is an unordered list and I don't want to confuse that with a div that might be called nav menu or a list item that might be nav menu or a paragraph that might be nav menu. I'm formatting the unordered list that has an ID called nav menu. So it's UL pound sign nav menu, no spaces, then a space and then list item. List items within my nav menu. And just so we can see how this might look, um, I'll put a border on them temporarily and I'll get rid of them. Solid and that's red. Okay. There we go. So now we can see my list items have that red border. And just so we can see them a little bit more clearly, how about a margin of two pixels? There we go. So there are my red bordered list items within my yellow background unordered list. And in the next part of this video, I'm going to go through and do a few more things with the style sheets to really have this behave like a navigation menu with that active link indication.